So, three years ago, I had a life-changing epiphany. It was this really unexpected moment of clarity that completely shifted the way I look at my life. Unfortunately, I had this amazing moment in the middle of a bar. <laughs> I was with friends for a girls' night out, and one of them asked, so, what did everybody do this week? I thought about it, and that question, it was a really depressing moment in the middle of a bar. <laughs> because I realized I spent my week running from one thing to the next. I mean, it was just a rush of obligations. And this was a little surprising to me because we had the life we wanted, we thought. So my husband and I started talking about it, and we realized somewhere along the way, life had just started blurring by. I mean, it was one thing after the next, and yet we were doing all the things we should and kind of ignoring all the things we really wanted to do. So we did something a little drastic. We sold everything we owned, we pulled our three daughters out of school, and we set off on a trip around the world. And over the next year and a half, we saw some of the most breathtakingly beautiful things we had ever seen in our lives. We also saw some of the most tragic situations that are facing our humanity. I mean, this was a level of poverty we didn't really know existed until we saw it firsthand. And we saw all these things really up close because we were volunteering as we traveled. We would go to a new country and we would see if there were organizations that needed some help, and we wound up volunteering 65 times over the course of our trip. And every single time we did, whether we were cleaning up trash on a beach in Chile or helping at a childcare program in Ethiopia, we were learning. You know, we were learning about the world and about ourselves and about each other. And by the time this journey ended for us, we were a very different family. And now we're back, and we are settling into a new life together, and we're seeing the lessons that we learned really come into our daily lives. And it is magical. And so I want to share a few of these lessons with you today, because we know that you don't have to go on some crazy trip around the world in order to understand them, and maybe to incorporate them into your life and benefit from them. So, the first lesson we learned was, learned very quickly, <laughs> to collect stories instead of stuff. And we all kind of know this, right? I mean, we get it, our life experiences they're more meaningful than our material possessions. But we love our stuff. I have a lot of cool stuff. <laughs> but we had to leave it all behind because, I mean, we had four little suitcases and five of us. There was not a lot of room for stuff. So we threw ourselves into this minimalist lifestyle. And I'm not kidding you, it was eye-opening. For one, we didn't miss the stuff at all. And we also realized that when we weren't focusing our money and our energy on accumulating and maintaining all of the stuff, instead, we were focusing on our experiences together. We were collecting our stories. And it was these stories that pushed us out of our comfort zones. You know, they really connected us to people in meaningful and memorable ways. They taught us about the world, they taught us about each other. Our family does not want to stop collecting our stories. But money doesn't grow on trees, right? So we have to make choices. Now, when we have a thing we want to buy, we have a one-month waiting period. Now, this doesn't apply to food or toilet paper <laughs> or my wrinkle cream, hello. But for everything else, all the big stuff, if a month goes by and we think, you know, we really need this, this is going to improve our lives, then we can buy it. 
But I'll tell you what, you would be shocked at how few things you actually purchase when you force yourself to wait a month because you realize you didn't really want it or need it all that badly. And now we have a lot more money and time to put towards collecting our stories. And it's our stories that are turning us into the family and into the people that we want to be. So that's the first lesson. The second lesson is to focus on happiness instead of success. And this gets a little tricky because sometimes we feel like those two things are intertwined, right? The people we met showed us happiness doesn't really come from the things we accomplish or the things we own or even the amount of power and fame we might acquire. We met the most content, joyful, grateful people we have ever known. And they were living in severe poverty. You see, they know something a lot of us have forgotten. And that is, happiness only exists right now. We can only be happy in the current moment that we're living in. So if we want a happy life, then we need to stack up as many joyful, peaceful, grateful, loving, content moments as we possibly can. And when we string all those moments together, that's the happy life we're looking for. Back in the bar, <laughs> I realized I was stacking up a bunch of stressed out, frazzled moments. And if I didn't change something, I wasn't gonna have the happy, authentic life I really wanted. So now we focus on creating happy moments. And I'm telling you, it has completely changed the way we're raising our kids. Because my husband and I, we have to ask ourselves, are we teaching our girls how to stack up their own moments of joy and bliss and gratitude? When I think back to the crazy schedule we were running, huh, all those activities, all that driving around town, I mean, there were so many days we were rushing out the door, and I was barking orders at my kids. I can assure you, the scary mommy version of me was not teaching my children to create happy moments. That was not about happiness. That crazy schedule we had was about making our children successful. You know, if I sign them up for all of these enriching activities, then they will have the skills they need to succeed. They will be competitive in this world. And I will have raised successful children. Yay me. But we never stopped to ask ourselves what all of those enriching activities were doing to our family's happiness day to day. Because with every piano lesson and soccer practice and dance class, we were making a sacrifice to our happiness because we were giving away our time together. And we didn't realize then what a mistake that was. You see, my husband and I had this parenting revelation on this trip when we were spending seven days a week, 24 hours a day, for a year and a half with our children. Do you know what we finally realized? The most enriching thing in our children's lives is us. We don't have to outsource their enrichment all the time because we are it. Our family is the most important activity our children will ever participate in as they grow and they learn about this world. But if we overschedule ourselves, if we give away too much of our time to too many enriching activities, then we can't be truly happy together because we separate ourselves too much. And we're too stressed out, running around all these obligations we created for ourselves. I really thought we were doing the right thing. I really thought we were a happy family with that crazy busy schedule of ours. But I didn't know what I was missing. So now, we focus on stacking up our happy moments each and every day and we are very selective with how we give away our time. And guess what? Success comes with that. 
It's a more balanced and a more peaceful version of success. You know, it's success that's based on the things our girls actually really care about. And the road they're going to take to get to success is going to be an authentic and a happy one. That's what happens when you start focusing on happiness first. So, the last lesson I want to share with you, my family calls See the Water. And I realize that doesn't really make a lot of sense, so I'm going to tell a little story I heard a few years ago that'll help explain it. You might have heard this too. So, these, there are these two little fish, okay? And they're swimming along, and they pass by an older fish. And as they pass by him, the older fish calls out, Hey there, how's the water? And then one young fish turns to his friend and he's like, what the heck is water? And I thought about this story a lot when we were traveling because we were seeing people living such vastly different lives. And it made me think about the unique water that each of us swims in. You know, we have these aspects of our individual realities that really shape who we become and how our lives unfold the country we're born in, the family we grow up with, our socioeconomic level when we're really little. I mean, so many things have tremendous effects on our lives. And yet, we don't really acknowledge them that much because we're just so used to them. You know, they're just part of our normal. We don't see how important they are in creating us as people. We don't see our own water. And I didn't see my own water because, you know, I took a lot of credit for my life. I worked hard and I studied and I got a good job and I chose to follow the path to a really stable, productive life. And it was a really easy path for me to follow. I mean, it was so obvious, I kind of had a hard time understanding when other people couldn't do it themselves. I just, I don't think I had a lot of sympathy when people couldn't get their lives together. I did it. Why can't you? It's not that hard. But then I saw my water. I had two parents who loved me and supported me. They could afford to put healthy food on the table and nice clothes on my back, and they focused me on my education every single day. I had some clean, clear water. I was a lucky little fish. And when I saw my water, I started seeing the water other people have to swim in. And it's not always as clean and clear as mine. This really hit home for me when we were in Bolivia. And my husband and I were volunteering with an organization that would go out onto the streets, and they would offer food and warm clothing and guidance to homeless drug addicts. So we're out there on a cold winter night, and I'm, you know, pouring coffee and handing out sandwiches. And I see this little girl. She's about two years old, and she's toddling around her mother's feet. And I look at her. <laughs> it hits me. It's like, this is her water. This is what she swims in every day. Drug addiction, prostitution, hunger. She was sleeping on a dirty mattress on the sidewalk. This little girl swims in polluted, murky water. And there is nothing she can do about it. That path I followed to my stable, productive life that was so easy for me, she doesn't know that exists. Nothing in her world looks like that life. So how is she supposed to follow the path to it? Chances are, she won't. This see the water concept was the most powerful lesson our family brought home from our journey. Because when we stand back and we see all the water that we're all swimming in, it profoundly changes the way we interact with this world. When we see the water, it changes the way we interact with each other. It makes us 
want to pull our fellow man to clean, clear water, you know? And not just in big ways. I mean, going and volunteering, giving your time and your money, helping people like that little girl in Bolivia, absolutely, those big acts of kindness, they change our world. You know, our philanthropic actions are cleaning the water of our humanity. But I think just as important are the small actions each of us can take every single day. It changes the way we talk to each other when we see the water. And I think that makes a huge difference too. I'll give you an example. I was at the grocery store the other day and the cashier was a total grouch. I mean, this lady was in a bad mood. And the inclination, you know, is to be grouchy back, right? You're going to be rude to me? Oh, fine. I'm going to be rude to you. But now I see the water. And I acknowledge I don't know what she's swimming in. I don't know the problems she's having to face today. I don't know the battles she's had to fight in her life. I don't know her water. But maybe I can still do something to help clean it. You know, just a little bit, a few drops. A kind word, a smile, being a really grateful, cheerful customer instead of a cranky one. I have the power to make a small, positive difference in this world every single time I interact with another human being. When we show true, unconditional empathy, when we let go of our judgment of others, we're seeing the water. And I think that changes the world. So, my family invites you to collect your stories. Put your money and your time towards those experiences that are going to keep you learning about the world and about yourselves. And focus on happiness. Make choices in your life that will let you stack up as many joyful, peaceful, blissful moments as you possibly can. Because it's the happy road to success that we want to be on. And finally, let's all see the water. And let's do little actions every single day to help pull each other to clean, happy water. Thank you so much.